Congress, right, is the only part of our government per the Constitution that can declare war. How is it we've been at war for 20 years? What's the point? What was the point, right? Because in, in Jalalabad, which has been considered for 10, 12 years now a hot spot, right? But in January, February, March of 2002, I was walking around the market without a gun. I'd hop on the ATV, jump in the truck, hop in the car with one of my troopers, one of my Afghanis, run down, wear an Afghani garb. The biggest threat to me in that market or anywhere in Jalalabad or all of Nangalhar province was having the people hug me too tightly. That was the biggest threat to me. Or maybe a car accident because traffic's crazy. You know, they loved us. They loved us. So what happened? The conventional military showed up so all the colonels and generals can get their stars and their awards and get their promotions. Those politicians, because let's face it, right? (laughs) Once you become a certain level whether it's enlisted or officer, right? Your career becomes that thing. And then looking out for your other, you know, upper senior officers, senior enlisted, we got to get them bronze stars. We got them purple hearts. Our, our unit needs medals. Our unit needs combat. Because, you know, to become a general without a CIB in the Army in this time frame, ooh, you got to go get some, right? And you're going to probably need a silver star, at least a bronze star would be. So how am I going to do that unless I go to war? So let's take these strikers and these M2 Bradleys and destroy roads and run over innocent people. And they weren't doing it on purpose. They're just, that's the conventional military. They have tanks. And, you know, I've never driven a striker before, but I've sat in a hatch. And I'm like, how can you drive this thing without running over everything, you know? And they're like, well, well you do run over everything because it can. Well, you know what, man? We made those enemies. We made the enemies. Then we're now fighting the second generation. We're fighting the sons of the men we killed in Torbor. We're fighting the sons of the men we killed in the Shaikha and Helmand and everywhere else at the beginning of that war. We created that enemy. And the same thing happened in Iraq. And, you know, let's face it, right? Afghanistan was righteous. You know, Al-Qaeda needed to fall. I, looking back, is it a good strategy to topple regimes that are predictable? The Taliban was very predictable. The Taliban has never met the requirement to be listed as a terrorist organization. They were a sovereign nation. And yes, they had horrible, horrible means and human rights abuses, but they were a sovereign nation. Gaddafi, sovereign nation. Freaking Iraq, sovereign nation with dictators. And dictators are predictable. They care about one thing. First and foremost, their main priority is their power. So they're predictable. You know, in the interviews with Saddam, you know, he talks about like, I thought y'all were kidding. He was like, I I thought y'all were making it up that you thought I had weapons of mass destruction. I haven't had gas in years. I don't have any of that stuff. In his interviews, you know, he's going, I really didn't think y'all were going to invade. So why did we? Well, I have my own theories. My theory is because people say we went to war for oil. I'm like, have you seen the oil prices? We didn't go to war for oil. We went to war with Iraq to stop its oil production. And the prices went up. Because if we had pumped oil out of Iraq, you wouldn't have made, all the oil companies wouldn't have made money. Right? Because that's a new source that we didn't, they didn't have rights or access to. You stop the oil, all right? Lower the supply, demand stays at or continues to increase. Prices go up. So that's a little bit of my theory on that, but whatever. Either way, at least, and that's only based off of what I have seen since, right? When we first invaded Iraq, I was, woo, let's go, you know, like every other little young trooper. But really, you know, we're talking hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, thousands of Americans, and and what did we get, right? If you tell me, you know, because war was supposed to be for expansion, um, minerals, riches, right? Throughout human history, war has been to expand your empire. Well, we suck at being an imperial power because <laughs> we go to these wars and we do nothing with the spoils. So why do we keep sending Americans? Because let's face it, was it really for our national defense or was it for our national interests? 
because that's two very different things. Most of my work throughout my life has been for interests, less about defense. Because once Al-Qaeda was destroyed and eliminated, and even ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Iraq, were they ever really capable of attacking us here? Yeah, you know, they flew the planes into those towers and they killed 3,000 plus people. But did they ever really threaten our daily lives? Did they threaten America, the United States? Probably not, you know? Right? Could they ever have brought that war on a large scale to America and affected the average American's daily life? No, they didn't have that capability. And, after, I mean, clearly, right? Like, none of that's really, we haven't had any big attacks since 9-11. I think they just blew their wad. They were done. They, they didn't really, I don't think they had any, any plan after that, right? <laughs> it was like, oh, no crap, now what? We pissed these guys off and they're coming for us. Now what? Right? They never really did anything since. So my point is, right, like, where has Congress been? Where has our representatives in our Senate been these last 20 years? The military industrial complex continues to make big time money, big time money. When our enlisted soldiers are in barracks that are covered in mold, just nastiness, right? They're living in poverty. Whereas you can go to the general's house on any post and it's a well-groomed lawn and it's basically a little mansion, right? So, so what did we get out of these wars? Well, it's arguable, right? It's very arguable, but the bottom line is Congress has continued to set aside its authority, its duty, its role, its responsibility to either declare war or cut the funding. They didn't cut the funding. A lot of people got rich off these wars. And I mean, I was a contractor. I Guilty, I, I, I got paid for going to war. Now, did I get paid like Glock or, you know, Northrop or Raytheon or... No, of course not. 